What's up everyone? Today I have another beginner's guide for the Division 2. This is part of my beginner's guide to Division 2 in 2024 series. We've got a lot of videos in this series and today I am covering countdown now i know a lot of people that are playing this game right now don't need any guide for this mode it's one of the most played game modes in the game however there might be something i could teach you today let me know in the comments but this is mainly for new players that just want to get acquainted with the game mode so i'll be covering everything you need to know about countdown in this video if you are a beginner to the game and want to check out some more of this series there's a playlist link down in the video description with all of these videos inside Countdown is a game mode that is accessible via your map or your pilot and it doesn't open up to you until you reach level 40 endgame. This means if you don't own the expansion you are not able to play this game mode. You must own that, reach level 40 endgame and then you'll have access to this game mode and it is practically a loot cave. And better yet, you can play this game mode solo or with friends. So here's the setup screen for a countdown session now from the pilot. You can see you get to select what difficulty you want to play on, but you can start matchmaking or you can create a countdown. If you start matchmaking, it'll find you a game with people that are looking to start a game on the difficulty that you've selected. And you can just jump in and get it done. Or you can create your own countdown session. You can invite friends and also start matchmaking again to fill spots if you want to. There's a maximum of eight players that can go into a round of countdown. I do just want to explain the difficulties though, because you don't need to play with eight players. If we drop the difficulty all the way down to normal, this could be done solo. You could probably solo the mode on hard as well. You can match make though to make things much easier, but most people like to play on challenging. They say challenging is the most efficient way to grind countdown with the length of time that it takes with the ads that you have and how much HP they have. People suggest that you just do challenging. And then if you start matchmaking on that difficulty, you can find games pretty much instantly. Same if you create your own game and you want to backfill, people should join up pretty instantly. And Heroic is the final difficulty there, which we probably will need at least a team of six, I'd say, very experienced players, ideally eight, to get the job done. Now, the enemies don't really differ too much throughout the different difficulties. Challenging and Heroic are exactly the same, just the HP of the enemies are different, they'll be more tankier. But as you drop down to hard, you drop down to normal, there will be less enemies on the game mode but all loot stays the same you'll get heroic loot no matter what difficulty you set up for your run of countdown just know that on the easier difficulties normal and hard you will get less enemies spawning in meaning less loot so i highly recommend playing on challenging at the least once you start a game of countdown, you are given 15 minutes to complete it. And I just want to go over the basis of this game mode now by bringing up the map. The first thing that you're going to want to do on your game is to select what targeted loot that you want. You'll notice on PC, if I hold H, it'll bring up the targeted loot menu. And I'm able to select whatever weapon I want to target for, any mods, any brand sets, or any gear sets. So that is how you select your targeted loot. And you can change this throughout the game. You can change it when you want just bring up your map hold h whatever it is on console and change it as you go if that's what you want to do next i just want to take a look at the countdown map you're going to notice that there are six areas we've got administration reactor turbine containment calling tower and laboratory every single game of countdown is going to allow you to go to four of the six areas and on this specific game we are going to be using turbine administration and calling tower out of these three locations we've got to complete two of them to unlock the final objective at laboratory you can tell that just by how the symbols are on this screen but if players want to they can work together to get all three of the objectives done at the three different areas before they take on the final area just for some extra reward at the end but that's not needed you have 15 minutes to get all of this done. And once you've completed the final objective, which unlocks after you've completed two of the prior ones, you'll have a four minute countdown every time, no matter what time is left to extract. 
And one final thing to take note of from the map are the three different countermeasures that you're going to encounter on every single game you run of countdown. These will be different. On this one, we've got hostile close range resistance. They also have explosive resistance and they have skill damage resistance. Now, we can leave these countermeasures as they are and make it harder for ourselves. Or at the start of every run, what players normally do is just go around these and just interact with the free terminals to turn the countermeasures into our favor. If we were to do that on this game, we'd get close range damage increase for ourselves. We'd have explosive damage increase for ourselves. And we'd also have a skill damage increase for ourselves as well. So they're worthwhile doing at the start of every game. Now I just want to take you through a quick run through of a general playthrough of Countdown. You can see we've just started one now, the 15 minutes have popped up and we've got to get going. And the first thing I do with this random squad that I've match made with is we're going to go around all these yellow containers and take the three countermeasures to put them in our favour. There are going to be hunters defending these containers though and you will need to deal with the hunters. They will drop loot for you, they drop hunter dog tags which I'll speak about later and they also drop some recalibration resources as well so take out the hunters make sure you go over the bodies for your rewards and interact with the yellow terminals to turn the countermeasures into your favor now there's loads of different countermeasures that you can get and you'll always have three of them and they'll be randomized every single time you play a game of countdown ones that i know that we have are close range damage increase long range damage increase you can increase your reload speed your skill cooldowns can be increased skill damage can be increased Skill cooldown reduction on kill can be a countermeasure. You can increase your critical hit chance, your headshot damage, armor repair, enemy hazard resistance can be reduced, status effects can be increased, and explosive damage can also be increased. I don't think I've missed any there, but if I have done, feel free to drop a comment down below. Once you've dealt with all of the countermeasures and the hunters defending them, you then got to move on to the three different objectives that you've got. And as I said earlier, you only need to complete two of these. So three areas will be open up. In my instance here, I had laboratory, turbine, and reactor. As a team, we just decide which ones we go to to get them done. And it's more efficient if the whole team just focuses on the same objective at the same time. You'll get them done very, very quickly, and you'll get the two out of three done in no time. Now, there's different objectives objectives that you can get at this point and this will be the same every single time it doesn't matter what area it gives you you'll always be faced with either eliminate the hostiles prevent hostile upload neutralize the warhounds secure the shade crates or protect the vip when you're playing with randoms the protect the vip objective is normally skipped people don't like doing that one because it's the longest one but at the same time it's not too difficult to do and if you want more loot protect the vip will give you more loot so just bear that in mind but these objectives could be anywhere this is always randomized you'll have three objectives of three different areas your objective at this point is just to complete two areas and it'll always be one of those five objectives that i mentioned once you have cleared two of the three areas, you'll get a main objective started. This will take you to one of the other six areas on the map, and you'll have like a boss objective to complete. And this objective will always be the same depending on what area you finish on. If the administration building is your final objective, you'll be given the objective to purge the virus from the admin network. This will have you and your squad just interacting with buttons and you'll have like a radius that you need to stay in or you hack those computers. There'll be a lot of hacking going on, a lot of enemies to defeat, but as a team, it's very straightforward. And once all the hacking is complete, you'll be ready for extraction. The final objective at containment starts off by shooting a weak point up top on the crane. You'll then hack a computer. There'll be a few more weak spots that you need to shoot before you finish it and extract. At the calling tower, the final objective will have you to fix the calling system. There's a lot of gas on the lower level that will eat away at your health, so you need to be careful of that. And if you're higher up, you'll be safe. But there's a lot of switches that you need to switch, a few weak points that you need to shoot. Just follow the objectives on screen. You'll have this done in no time. At the laboratory, you'll be tasked to disable the EMP threat in the lab. On the outskirts of this area, there's going to be a random laptops that you need to interact with and charge up. Once you've charged them up, the reactor in the center, you're able to shoot out with a red weak spot. And you just do that over and over. So do a laptop, shoot out the center weak spot. Just keep on doing that until you've completed the objective. 
In the turbine area, your final objective will be to switch the power to the new grid. This can be quite annoying because every now and then the whole floor is going to go electric. This will affect you and enemies, but if you're wearing something like glass cannon, it can kill you, so be very, very careful. You'll just be going around interacting with fuses and switches, and eventually you'll just have to start the new power grid by going up to the main room, interacting with a computer, and staying in the radius until it completes. At the end, then, you'll just clear the waves of enemy and and you'll be finished. And finally, the reactor area for the final objective here. It just has you going around terminals, interacting with them, and then defending the area by staying in the area that highlights. A very simple one. Once the final objective has been completed, no matter how much time you've got left, it could be five minutes, it could be eight minutes, it could be one minute. As soon as the final objective completes, it's going to give you four minutes to extract. So you don't need to worry if your time is getting low, as long as you can get all three of these objectives completed, within 15 minutes you will always have the four minutes to extract. But in the final area, there is one more thing that you want to do after each completion, and that's just collect your kind of like boss loot. There'll be this big yellow crate in every final area, which it will highlight to you after completion, where you can just go and grab a little bit more loot. There is a crashing bug on Countdown, though, at this point. No, I don't think it matters what system you're playing on, whether it's PC or console. There's a chance you can crash when you open that chest, so open it at your own risk. This has got better over time, though. Once you've done all the objectives, you've grabbed your boss loot, you picked up all the other loot along the way, you'll then be on that extraction process. And like I said, you've got four minutes from when the very final objective has been completed. And this can be a little bit rough. There's going to be plenty of hunters on an extraction you need to deal with, along with a lot of Black Tusk enemies. These enemies will keep on spawning in as well. On the extraction where you need to head to to call in your chopper, there'll be a Black Tusk chopper that comes in every few minutes that will also drop off more and more enemies so you need to be efficient you need to be quick you need to take out the hunters as quick as possible these hunters at this stage will drop you more loot you'll get hunter dog tags like you had at the start of the game mode but you'll also get some more loot off of them in the form of named items so they are very very rewarding make sure you get your hunter loot there's also another opportunity here to get further targeted loot off the black tusk enemies that they keep on dropping off Every game of Countdown is the same. It'll give you a different faction each run. So you might have Outcasts one run. It could be Hyenas the next. It could be Cleaners. Whatever faction it gives you from the start it will remain throughout your run of Countdown until the extraction. At the extraction, it is always Black Tusk and it is always Hunters. And obviously, every single game will feel different because the areas that are used on each run and the different objectives that you can get with the final objective that it gives you depending on the area that you finish the run on each run so every game does feel different it's a very pleasant experience and you do get a hell of a lot of loot there's something called countdown courtesy as well if you are playing with a random squad when you are at the extraction point ready to call in the chopper players like you to wait until the last few seconds to call it in this enables players to grab every last bit of loot they can from the mode where they keep on killing the enemies that come in on the chopper and they say to call the chopper in when it's got less than 10 seconds to go before the round finishes once you call it in it'll give you a little bit more time to get another chopper to come in from black tusk for that last bit of loot before you extract and you get out. With there being so much loot available to collect in Countdown, I highly recommend that you have plenty of space in your inventory to pick up all of the loot. This will make your runs as efficient as possible. You can see my inventory here is at 47 out of 150. That is a good amount to go in and I can be sure that I'll be able to pick up every item that it drops me during the game mode. And my advice to everyone when playing this game mode, just to save time and to support your team the best that you can, is don't just stand there looking at loot. Just pick it up as junk or just pick it up as you're walking over it and stay in the fight. Especially on extractions, these can get very tricky if the whole squad is just standing there looking at the loot and letting hunters kill them. It doesn't make sense. So pick it up quickly with the pick up all junk or loot all button and sort it out all afterwards once you've left the game mode. If you are 
are playing with friends and you want to share items, you're able to invite each other after a game session is done to your own world to share those items. It can be with anybody that was in your countdown group. So everything like that can be done afterwards. And that just leaves you and your squad to deal with the objective at hand while you're playing. One final tip as well, especially for the extraction, is skill builds are a no-go. If you were to use skill builds and anything like drones, anything that can attack and cause damage, the hunters can hack these and they'll turn these skills onto you and your squad. I have seen many runs fail because someone has turned up with a skill build. On a successful extraction of Countdown, you will get this end screen, which gives you an overview of what you've just done. So on this run I've just completed, the time it took was 14 minutes 52. All eight agents got extracted. We completed two out of the three encounters that it gave us at the start. As I said earlier, you can work together to get all three done if you want to. This will reward you with more hunter dog tags at the end if you can do this this is not including the final objective which you have to do and it will then just also increase the number of missions completed on this run we did five there's a maximum of six that you can complete the dog tags collected in total for this run was 24 with all the bonuses i got a plus 72 with the extraction bonus of 79 as well in total i got 158 hunter dog tags for this completion this will also be altered with what difficulty you play on if you play on an easier difficulty you'll get less dog tags all the way up to heroic they'll give you the most dog tags the absolute most dog tags that you can get is by playing countdown on heroic with eight people all eight people extracting while completing all three of the encounters that it gives you from the start including the final encounter then and the extraction and with your hunter dog tags, they are like the icing on the cake. The game mode is so rewarding anyway. But here at the base of operations, next to the pilot, we have this rally point that we can interact with. This is the countdown requisition station. And each week, it, it serves as like a vendor. You'll get different items on each reset each week on a Tuesday that go on sale. Some of these can include DZ items as well, like the gift backpack or the dark winter. So keep an eye out for this. But on top of that, they sell you cash caches also there's a named item cache which again can drop dz items if you're lucky you got optimization caches you can buy year five season three vanguard caches caches right now at the time of this recording and finally exotic caches which are the most expensive and they cost 224 countdown currency i'm currently out of currency because i've spent it all recently on exotic caches but this is a great way to save up currency get yourselves a lot of exotics and get exotic components if that's something that you're searching for countdown is extremely rewarding and the fact that you could just match make solo and play this it makes it very accessible and as i said at the very start of the video you can also play this solo without a group if you want to on the easier difficulties it is your loot cave for the division two you'll be able to farm any builds that you want pretty much with this game mode it's fun to play and i highly recommend it a lot of people ask what's the best way to get loot in the division two countdown is the way it really is one thing i want to finish off with this video now is just the additional loot that you can get in each of the areas while you're playing the game mode there are three chests that can be open every single time you play a game of countdown and enter one of these areas one of these three chests will be accessible to open just to get some additional loot so a lot of people ask about these and want to know where these are located so i'm going to show you where these are now per area
Evacuate the facility. Five minutes to lockdown. Detonation imminent. Proceed with caution. Disable all electronics.
These extra chests that you can open per area are great for additional loot, but also you get shade calibration, which can be used for optimization. We're now at the end of this guide, and I think the only thing we haven't covered really for countdown is countdown builds. Now, at the state of play and how the game is right now, honestly, most people are probably just running in there with a striker's build. It is the meta, it's great DPS, it'll get the job done. So if you're running a striker's build, you'll be absolutely fine. Any version of of that build whatsoever one thing you can do though is be a team player you could run in as a healer with a healer build to heal your squad you could also run in with a tank build for your squad and be that person that just face tanks those hunters to give your team a distraction to take them out easier there are so many different builds that you can use, different talents, different team buffs to really give your team the edge. But as I said, if you just want to go in with your standard striker DPS with a St. Elmo's, it is going to be more than enough. And that does bring us to the end of this beginner's guide to countdown in 2024. I hope it's been helpful for someone. As I said at the very start of the video, this is for new players coming to the game that want to learn more about the game mode. But if you are an experienced player and you learned anything new today, let me know in the video comments. Post anything that you think I may have missed down below for beginners to read as well. I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like on the video to support it. Subscribe for more content from me. And also check out that beginner's guide playlist link down in the video description of this any more you want to know about the division 2 i've got everything in there until next time thank you for watching this one take care and peace out